Good morning and welcome to our online church service. We are doing things a little different today. So while you are watching this live on YouTube, we are actually having in-person service at our Southside Church. So um, I am not watching with you right now um, and I can't see the comments. So um, I'm just trusting that you know what to do, comment, um, like it, share it, let us know that you're here, let us know who's watching with you. And if you have prayer requests, put them in the comments. I know we have a lot of needs that have been posted on the church page. Um, we wanna pray for the Mays family, um, for Vicki Grady and family, for the Hearts, for Becky Woods, for Stephanie Glossville, um, for Denise and for Mr. Bill that goes to church with us here. Um, so lots of different needs going on. Um, God knows what they all are. And um, we just need you to be lifting up your church family in prayer. And if you have other prayer requests, put them in the comments. And um, later I'll go back and watch this. And I will be sure to pray for you and pray with you. And um, as always, we are um, available on Messenger or um, by phone. You can reach out to us if you have any specific needs or if you need to talk to, to someone. Um, you can give online at homelandchurch.org backslash donate. Or um, you can mail ties and offerings or just letters or whatever to um, the Gathering P.O. Box 3180 Parkersburg, West Virginia. 26103. Um, and I think that's about it. We're in person today and also this afternoon at 14th Street. If you are joining us in person, you, you will have to wear a mask and we're still um, sitting every other pew and social distancing as much as possible. Um, and if you are not feeling well, if you're quarantined right now, if you've been exposed to somebody who has COVID, um, if you just, if you're elderly, if your immune system's compromised, if you're just nervous or unsure about being in crowds, um, I encourage you just watch us online. Um, we want to have in-person worship available for those who, um, who need that but we also want to be safe. So um, so there's no shame in, in just joining us online right now um, until the world settles down a little bit. Um, and, and we hope that you will still feel connected. Um, make sure that you're reaching out, checking on each other, checking on your neighbors, um, loving people the way Jesus loves people while this is all going on. Our food ministry is still... Um, still going. We're serving outside, serving um, community dinners every Saturday at 4 at 14th Street outside. Um, and then both food pantries are pick up at the door um, Tuesdays on 14th Street from 4 to 5 or Thursdays at Southside from 4 to 5. So if you have any questions about that, the number to call is 304-966-5153. And I think that's all the announcements I've got. Um, so we're going to shoot over to some worship videos and then we'll be back in just a minute with our message. <laughs>
As Christians, here's what we believe. Advent is a time of waiting. Advent is a time of waiting. It's the night sky right before the dawn. Advent is a time to go down deep. Deep into the valley of the shadow of death. And to light candles. We will light candles. Advent is the time to get ready for the birth of Jesus. It's a time to proclaim with all the prophets that Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. To turn despair into hope. Violence into peace. Sorrow into joy. Hatred into love. This shiny new world is what we glimpse on Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. As people of faith, we will set aside the four weeks of Advent to wait and watch and walk together through God's starry night and And into into the dawn. Welcome back. Today is the first Sunday of the Advent season. Um, so if you if you weren't raised in a church that celebrates um, the liturgical calendar, you might not be really familiar with what Advent is. Um, you may possibly have heard of an Advent calendar. We typically think of them as something kids do while they're counting down days till Santa comes, their anticipation of Santa coming. But the real purpose of the season of Advent is um, is celebrating this anticipation of the coming of Jesus. So Advent literally comes from um, the Latin word Adventus, which means arrival. And in the season of Advent, the church is both looking backwards at Jesus's arrival as a baby in Bethlehem, but also looking forward um, ahead in time to when Jesus is gonna come again. And so the whole Advent season is kind of this anticipation and this hope um, that the church has. And and for the church, Jesus coming as a baby in Bethlehem changed the world completely. It changes, changes everything about the world. So we kind of celebrate it as our new year. Um, you know, the rest of the world will celebrate new year here in about a month, well, at least in the Western world. And, um, and we think about right now kind of being the end season. It's that we're wrapping up 2020, thank God. Um, and we're, we're looking towards ending things. But in the church year, um, this is the beginning. So happy new year. Um, so each week of Advent focuses on a different aspect of the coming of Jesus Christ. Um, so the, the weeks are hope and then peace and then joy and then love. And this week, the theme for Advent is hope. And as we remember the hope of the people um, as they anticipated the coming of the Messiah 2,000 years ago, we also celebrate the hope that we have um, anticipating his second coming. We talk about Jesus coming again, and we talk about him, um, you know, coming in on the clouds and ushering in the kingdom, and it's the end of ages. We read about it a lot in um, in the book of Daniel and in the book of Revelation, and and we can talk about that as the church in a way where um, we're hopeful, we're excited about that, we are ready for Jesus to come. Um, but not everyone looks through that same lens when they're talking about the end times or the end of the world. Um, some people have a real fear of, of Jesus coming back and, and of uh, the end times. So what is the difference? Why do some of us look at this idea of Jesus coming back as relief um, and something to celebrate while other people look at it as something scary? And the answer is in how we are prepared how each one of us personally is prepared. So the passage we're going to look at today comes from the Gospel of Mark. Um, And it's a parable of Jesus that he tells. um, And he's telling this in in what we call the Olivet Discourse. So he is with his friends, his disciples, his closest group of followers. um, And he is telling them this the night before he is arrested in the garden. Um, and, and so in Mark 13, we're going to read verses 33 through 37. And Jesus says this, watch, be alert, for you don't know when the time is coming. It is like a man on a journey who left his house, gave authority to his servants, gave each one his work and commanded the doorkeeper to be alert. Therefore, be alert since you don't know when the master of the house is coming 
whether in the evening or at midnight or at the crowing of the rooster or early in the morning. Otherwise, when he comes, suddenly he might find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to everyone, be alert. So there are two things that Jesus tells us that we have to do um, as we are anticipating the coming of Christ. And if you want to anticipate that with hope and not with dread, you need to do these two things. And they are get saved and get to work. Um, most of you I'm, who are watching, I believe, have got that first one covered. Um, you have already put your faith in Jesus Christ and, and you know that your salvation comes through your relationship with him, through what he did on the cross, and, and you're there. If you're watching this morning and you're not there, um, I pray that you would get there, that you would um, really think about uh, about these words of Jesus, about being ready, being alert, being watchful, um, and know that the first step in being ready for Jesus to come back is surrendering your life to him. Um, it is, you know, it, He's done all the heavy lifting. It's not hard work. The, the hardest part is humbling yourself to realize that you need Jesus. But once you've made that step, um, he's done all the hard work for you. He died on the cross for you. Um, you just have to place your faith in that and surrender your life to him. And, um, and so once you get that, so once you get the get saved, then the next part is get to work. And in this parable, Jesus, um, he tells us of um, this master who left the house. Um, he went on a journey, and, and when he left, he gave each servant their own particular job to do while, while he was gone. And, and one, the doorman, his job is to just watch for the master to come back. Um, so each person is given a job to do, and obviously in this parable, Jesus is the master, um, he has left and, and he's left us in charge of his house, in charge of his church, in charge of his people. Um, and he's given us all jobs to do as we anticipate him coming back. He tells us to get to work. So it's not just watching and waiting. It's also working and warning. Um, a lot of people think Christianity is just that first part, that getting saved part. Um, and then we kind of just sit and watch and wait for Jesus to come back. And um, that's not how it works. There is um, there is more to this thing called Christianity. There is more to what Christ has for us. And the other part of that is working and warning. The most important thing that you have to do in your life is to get saved. And the second most important thing you have to do in your life is to lead others to make that same decision. You can't make that decision for them. You can't choose Jesus for someone else. Um, that's really frustrating. A lot of us have somebody in our life that we wish we could. Um, a lot of us have somebody that we want to just shake and, and, and make them choose Jesus, but it doesn't work like that because they have free will. But what we can do is we can show them Jesus every single day with the way we live, with the words we speak, the way we serve others, the way we love others. And by showing them Jesus, um, we can trust that he's enough um, and that when they see him, they will want to serve him and want to know him. We all have different work to do. We all do this in different ways. We're not all called to preach and teach. Um, we're not all called to lead worship. I'm not called to sing, thank God. Um, we're not called to all called to work with children or to cook or to clean in the church. But we are all called to do something. Um, and you should be actively doing something that builds the kingdom, whether it is within the ministries of the church, um, whether it's in your own family, if it's in your workplace, um, if it's in your personal life with your group of friends, um, whatever it is, there should be something that you can pinpoint and look at right now um, that you are doing currently in your life that is building the kingdom of God. Um, we don't know the hour he will return. Jesus says that in the verse right before this passage. He says, no one knows the hour, um, not even the son. Only the Father in heaven knows the hour that Jesus is coming back. And um, some of us live our lives like we don't really believe he's coming back at all. 
Um, and if he is, we think may, it's not going to be in our lifetime, so it doesn't really affect us anyway. But friends, it could be today. It could be this afternoon that Jesus comes back. And, and ask yourself this. If you knew for a fact that Jesus was coming back today at 5 p.m., um, is there something different that you would be doing? Is there somebody that you would be desperately warning, somebody that you would desperately be trying to convince to give their life to Jesus? Is there somebody you would be loving differently or serving differently, something you would be doing um, with a sense of urgency because Jesus is coming back today? Um, and if the answer to that is, yes, there is something don't wait. Do it because he could be coming back today. Um, three times in this passage, in just four verses, three times Jesus tells us, be alert. Um, I think he means it. He wants us to be alert. He wants us to be watching and waiting. As we look backwards and we remember the season of anticipation for Jesus um, coming into the world as a baby in Bethlehem, we need to be alert and looking forward to when Jesus as the master will return and usher in the kingdom. But we also need to be aware and be alert of his presence here um, in the here and now and while we wait. And so this afternoon at our 14th Street Church, um, the passage we're going to look at is 1 Corinthians 1, 3 through 9. And this is a letter that Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. And we actually just read through this book in Bible study. So this will be really familiar to um, those of you who have been going through Bible study with us. But Paul says in this passage, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God for you because of the grace of God given to you in Christ Jesus, that you were enriched in him in every way, in all speech and all knowledge. In this way, the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you so that you do not lack any spiritual gifts as you eagerly await the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you will be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. You were called by him into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, and so Paul's reminder here is that um, while Jesus has called us um, to be waiting and watching and working and warning, he is also present among us while we're doing those things, while we're waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, he is at the center of everything. Um, you know, we, we're celebrating Jesus coming as a baby and we're looking ahead to Jesus coming um, on the clouds as a king, but we don't want to forget that Jesus is also present with us here. Um, he is literally in us. If you belong to Christ, his spirit is inside you. Um, and all of those things that we're doing, working and mourning and building the kingdom, um, Jesus is at the center of all of those things. Um, so we're, we'll talk about that a little bit more again this afternoon at 14th Street. But I want you to think about this week about how you um, how you are anticipating the coming of Christ. Do you look forward to Jesus coming back um, with hope and excitement, or is it something that's scary to you and something that that brings dread to you? Um, and the difference in that is in how your heart is prepared. Um, if you are saved and you are working for the kingdom, then you're ready, and um, and there is nothing to fear in that. You can you can look forward to Jesus coming back with a sense of hope and, and excitement and anticipation. Um, so as we start kicking off our Christmas season, um, we're going to be looking at all of these these passages over the next couple of weeks that remind us about. Um, th this anticipation and, and waiting for Christ to come. But don't, don't forget, don't miss the places in your life where Jesus already is. Um, you know, don't miss how he is already here working in your life and in the life of people that you love um, and, and people that you see him drawing um, to himself. So, I'm going to pray for you. We're going to pray for all of the comments, all the prayer requests. Again, I, I can't see them because I'm not watching with you today, um, but I will go back and watch them. And 
Um, I really hope that every single person who is watching this morning has made that decision to follow Christ. Um, you know, his directions for us are get saved and get to work. Um, and, and the second one is important, but not nearly as important as that first one. Um, so if you have questions about how you can um, know that you know that you know that you are going to heaven, um, call me and message me or message someone else in the church or another Christian friend that you have. Um, but don't put it off because no one knows that hour um, when Jesus will return. And we want to be alert and be ready and be watching. Um, and once you have surrendered your life to him, um, gets work that that's when that's when your work begins um watching and waiting and working and warning um and growing the kingdom with jesus in partnership with him as we wait for his return let's pray father we thank you for um, for this word we thank you for um, for this promise of, of the return of the master lord as we get ready to celebrate Christmas season. We, we celebrate baby Jesus coming to us um, as the savior of the world. Lord, but we also look ahead to an, a time when, um, when Jesus will come and reign and bring in his kingdom, Lord, and, and we thank you for that. We thank you that as Christians, um, we can look ahead to that with hope and excitement. Um, and we pray that, that you would remind us every day to be like that watchman at the door, um, to be watching for the master to come back, to be warning other people, to be alert, um, to be working, to be growing the kingdom. Um, Lord, we pray that you would help us to remember as we look ahead to you coming back, um, that, we, that we are aware of your presence that is here with us now. Lord, we can't do anything without your spirit. Everything that we do, we do because you give us the power to do it. Um, Lord, and I pray that we would be humble and remember that, um, that nothing that we do is, is because of us. It is because of you. Lord, I pray that your church would um, would continue to grow and thrive and, and reach people even in this difficult time where we're physically um, separated. Lord, I pray that you would help us to stay emotionally and spiritually connected to one another. And Lord, I pray for everyone who was mentioned um, in, in the prayer requests and in the comments, Lord, um, that you would just give healing where healing is needed, that you would give spiritual comfort, um, that you would, that you would um, just be a presence in each of those situations. Lord, I don't even know all the details of every situation, but you do. You are already working in our tomorrows, Lord, and I pray that your will would be accomplished um, in each situation, that you would help us to be patient and wait um, and to trust you. And Lord, we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Bye, guys.